Hello, everyone, and welcome to Helping Your Child Save a Life, a parent training on suicide prevention in Bellevue School District. My name is Lane Barker, and I'm the Signs of Suicide Coordinator this year. I'm happy to be with you to provide you with really important information to help your child um, and your community prevent suicide. If you'd like to view this presentation in a different language, you can select captions at the bottom right of the screen. So in the YouTube window, you're gonna click on the bottom right of the screen on settings, click subtitles or CC, and then select a language. If the language isn't listed, when you click on subtitles, click auto translate and select a language. The Signs of Suicide program is brought to us by Bellevue School District and is a part of the district's initiatives to enhance student well-being. The Signs of Suicide program is also supported by the mental health assistance team who um, supports the implementation of the lesson in the classrooms, um, as well as follows up with students who indicate a need for an individual check-in after the Signs of Suicide lesson. And I just wanna start also with a special thank you to the Bellevue Schools Foundation who provided the funding to start this project in Bellevue School District and continues to fund um, our access to some of the Signs of Suicide curriculum as well as um, some FTE for coordination of this project. Suicide can be a really challenging topic for everyone, and I wanna give space and time right now to acknowledge that. While we are going through this presentation, please take a break if you need to. Please pause the video, take time to think, um, take time to breathe, and um, just know kind of your own needs while you're watching this. It can be a really difficult topic when we may not even expect it. So please just take the time that you need to go through this video. If it brings up feelings and emotions for you, that's absolutely normal um, and expected. Remember also help is always available. The National Suicide Prevention Lifeline and Crisis Text Line are here below. Um, you as a, as a parent who is seeking help for someone else or seeking help for yourself can always access these resources 24 seven. And I would really encourage you to check these resources out in advance so that if you do have concerns or need support, um, you can access them when needed. In this presentation today, we're going to be talking about helping your child save a life. We're going to review youth suicide prevention basics we're going to review the acronym that all of our students are learning about who received the SOS lesson, which is Acknowledge, Care, and Tell, ACT. Um, we're going to talk about what to do when your child acts, um, especially if they seek you out as a trusted adult from our community. We are going to talk about building coping skills, as well as provide you with resources for um, additional parent learning. So let's start by talking about why suicide happens. Um, suicide typically happens because someone is trying to stop intention, intense emotional pain. And it really is a multifaceted thing. It's not kind of one factor. Um, the research has really shown that there's not one thing we can point to or one predictive factor. It's kind of this complex um, cluster of things that happen that can happen for a person. A really important factor in why suicide happens is untreated depression. Um, the experience of depression um, and other mental health disorders um, can lead a person to thoughts of suicide, especially when depression goes untreated. Um, it can lead to some other behaviors and some other psychological factors that contribute to someone thinking about suicide. The important thing to know is that depression is treatable Many people who access treatments such as medications and therapeutic supports get better. Um, depression is unfortunately quite common in our youth. And so access to treatment and support, if you are worried about yourself or your child um, experiencing depression is a really important factor. An additional important factor in um, why suicide occurs is drinking and drug use. Um, especially when someone is using drugs or alcohol as a way to cope or as a way to sort of numb intense emotions that they've been dealing with. Um, so drinking and drug use is, is um, associated with higher suicide risk in kids and teens. 
If you're aware that your child is using substances or drinking, especially as um, a coping mechanism, please do seek support either from your medical um, or mental health providers in the community, or please reach out to the school, um, your school counselor or school administrator, and we can help connect you to resources. Other key factors um, that we can point to in why suicide happens include isolating and withdrawing, noticing big changes in behavior for someone, including pulling away from things that they used to do, withdrawing from social situations, um, as well as just a loss of hope, a feeling that there isn't hope for the future or that things are not going to get better. Access to guns is, is really a critical factor to discuss when we're talking about why suicide happens. Um, teens especially, but adults as well, um, are at risk for taking action to take their own life when they have means readily available to them that are highly lethal. Access to guns you know, is the most lethal way that someone could take their own life. Um, it's important that if your family has weapons in your home um, to ensure that they are locked and stored separately from ammunition. Um, and if you would like more information about firearm storage, please consider um, going to the King County um, Lock It Up website. I believe it's lockitup.org. Um, for more information, there are often programs in our community that even can provide families with safe firearm storage information um, and even sometimes fund um, families with accessing locking mechanisms for their weapons. And then lastly, thoughts of suicide. When someone has thoughts of suicide, it does not necessarily mean that they want to die but it does indicate that the person is trying to solve the problem of intense emotional pain and hopelessness. People generally don't want to die, um, but they do want the pain to stop and they're tired. So now let's talk about prevention. Suicide is preventable in many cases and really, um, especially when our community comes together to learn this type of information. Parents, guardians, and community members play an important role in keeping young people safe. Important ways to prevent suicide include accessing treatment for depression. Um, if you are concerned about someone in your, in your life um, experiencing depression, um, it's about supporting them with access to treatment. There are many resources within the Bellevue School District to um, support you with accessing treatment. You can also access treatment through your medical provider. Um, oftentimes we recommend that families talk openly with their child's pediatrician or medical doctor to discuss what's going on for them um, and they can provide screening and referral for additional support. And again, we also have resources within the district to support um, our students with accessing mental health treatment. Improving healthy habits is also a really important part in both treating depression and reducing suicide risk. Healthy habits including you know, eating well, um, support with improved sleeping habits, um, getting some exercise is a really key factor in supporting people with feeling better. Getting those endorphins going in the body, getting up and moving are really important um, factors to helping people feel better. Connecting to peers and adults is another really important protective factor for our kids. Um, isolation and withdrawing, like we talked about in the previous slide, um, are predictive factors that a suicide might occur. And so protecting people from suicide risk really involves finding connection for them within their community, within their school, um, so that, that that sense of isolation um, is reduced. Teaching coping skills is another really important factor that um, we can talk about in our homes, but, as, but is also a key component of therapy for depression or other mental illnesses. So learning ways to cope with big emotions that don't require you to take really significant action, right? Reducing that sense of intense emotional pain by doing things that you know how to do to feel better. Preventing access to guns, like we discussed on the last slide, is a really key 
um, factor in reducing um, suicide risk. Again, um, guns are one of the le are, are the leading cause um, of, of folks who die by suicide are the leading method. Um, and so it's really important that we remove that kind of most lethal means that people might choose to consider taking their own life. And then lastly, instilling a feeling of hope, supporting someone with feeling like there's hope um, and, and a light in the future for them, um, things to work toward, things to look forward to, um, and helping folks kind of connect to that feeling is another really important factor in preventing suicide. And also just um, instilling hope that it does get better, right? That this deep in emotional pain that a person is going through um, can be treated and that they can get better and that this is a temporary um, situation for them. Let's transition now to talking about what your child can do to prevent suicide in our community. Our students are um, receiving the signs of suicide lesson from seventh through 10th grades this year, um, which is provided in many instances by the science teachers um, and the mental health assistance team, as well as the teaching and learning department. Um, our students have a key role because they talk to their friends. They know what's going on with their friends and they know when something isn't right. And so it's important to train our students to notice warning signs, to lean into concerns that they have for a friend, and to access support when they are concerned. The signs of suicide lesson that's being taught this year from seventh through 10th grades involves students watching a set of three videos and discussing with their classmates and teacher um, what they see in the videos. The big, biggest message we want students to get out of this lesson is this acronym ACT. The A stands for acknowledge. We are teaching students and we're teaching parents too to notice signs of depression um, or suicide in a friend. We spend time watching the videos and learning and noticing um, signs that are shown by the real life um, stories and the dramatized stories of kids their age in the videos. So acknowledging and noticing those warning signs in someone. The C stands for care, showing the friend that you care, right? Not ignoring these signs, I'm really recognizing that something's not right with my friend. And instead of ignoring or downplaying, instead leaning in, showing the friend that you care. Um, I want to know more about this. Tell me how you are doing. I want to support you. I care about you as a friend. And then telling a trusted adult. This is really the most important part for our students um, and families to know that we never want to hold a secret or hold concern for someone ourselves. That if we do have concern for, for someone's safety, that it's really important to tell a trusted adult. The lesson also involves teaching our students about warning signs. Um, oftentimes our students do show us that there is concern for their safety um, or that they're going through a depressing a depressive time um, with things that we can see in their behavior and with emotional responses that we see from them. It's really important for parents also to know the warning signs that someone might be thinking about suicide because most of the time we do have clues to point to. We, we can sort of tell that someone's not doing well. The warning signs that, the, that are taught in the videos and that we want you to know as well include um, anger, especially when there's a big change, right? When your child um, seems to kind of be escalating or have that really hair trigger lately, um, especially when it's a big change from behavior before. So um, anger is often, um, is more common, a symptom of depression, especially in teens than even in adults. Um, oftentimes we don't think about anger as being associated with feeling sad and down and depressed, but we do see anger really commonly in teens, especially um, who are experiencing depression. Um, and oftentimes that anger sort of masks that depression is what's going on because we don't always associate anger with depression. Other things to look for as warning signs include big changes in behavior. So especially when it comes to withdrawing, 
right? So when someone was engaged in a sport, in an activity, in their school community, in you know, social time with friends, and we see big changes in that, that should really key us in that something isn't right for the person. Thoughts of hopelessness, verbalizing things like um, not seeing a future, not seeing um, hope for the future um, are really important to listen for. Um, sleep disturbance is also very common in folks with depression. So sleeping really often and a lot um, or sleeping a lot less and seeing big changes in sleep behavior um, should also go, you know, cue us in to think more about what's going on for someone. Drinking or drug use are really important factors, um, especially like we talked about earlier when there's suspicion that drinking or drug use are happening um, chronically and um, and are being used as a coping mechanism to deal with big emotions. Um, overwhelming pain, right? Someone um, talking about, you know, feeling like the sense of emotional pain is just too much um, or that they're tired of kind of fighting this, this down feeling. And then obviously talking about suicide, right? When people bring things up like, you know, saying explicit things like I want to die or I want to go to sleep and never wake up. Um, those should definitely key us in that something perhaps isn't right um, for their for their friend or for their child. Each of these warning signs might seem like they are very typical teenage behavior at times. And so we just want to be looking for for these things. Um, any one of these warning signs does not necessarily indicate that someone is suicidal, but we want to sort of have our have our feelers out for noticing these things. And when we do notice them, to take action, to lean in, to acknowledge, care, and tell, and ask the person how they're doing. So here's the C part of the Acknowledge, Care, Tell acronym, showing you care. Um, leaning into these situations, when we've noticed warning signs on the previous slide, really teaching students to lean in and show that they care. Um, you can say things like, it's okay to feel that way. Tell me more about it. I'm here for you, right? The key part here is just, you know, leaning into this situation, not downplaying those warning signs, and instead asking, are you okay? Um, I want to support you. Um, and just really listening, right? Keeping an open ear for someone um, to have a place to share. Oftentimes, people who are experiencing suicidal thinking um, want to talk about it, need to say something about it to access support. And so we're really encouraging our students and you as community members to be an open ear, to be a person that people know that they can go to to talk about these kinds of things. And the last step in our Acknowledge, Care, Tell, ACT acronym is tell a trusted adult. If you're worried about a friend, if you're worried about a child in our community, if you're worried about it, your own child, if you're worried about yourself, telling a trusted adult is the key factor in ensuring that people get support. Um, oftentimes, students go through concern that they would be telling on someone or that they would be, um, that their friend is going to be mad at them for telling or that they might get in trouble for telling. Um, and we really encourage our students that it's more important to save a life than to keep their friends secret. Um, it's more important to save a life than worry about whether someone is going to be mad at them for doing so. Right? It's really worth making someone upset at you. It's worth being the person who um, was sort of overly sensitive or misinterpreted um, what someone said or being accused of kind of blowing things out of proportion, it's worth those consequences when you could have prevented, um, a, you know, someone taking an act to harm themselves. So when you're, you know, when you're um, hearing things from your kids, we want you to sort of keep your ears open because we've encouraged our students to reach out to any trusted adult. And that could be you as a parent, you as a community member, um, as well as us as staff members. So when you're hearing, I, I need to tell you something from your kids, um, we encourage you to really keep an open ear and acknowledge, care, and tell. So now that kids have received the signs of suicide lesson, we've encouraged them to reach out to any trusted adult in the community 
um, or in the school to get support. So if you as a parent or community member are hearing from your child that they're concerned about a friend, there are things you can do to support. Um, keep in mind too that you as community members and parents might be a trusted adult for someone else's child who isn't your child, right? Um, we encourage kids to seek out coaches, um, to seek out friends' parents, to seek out you know, tutors and violin teachers, um, and et cetera, in their community to get support because we want kids to go to an adult that they trust and feel that they can talk openly with, and that could be you. So um, if your child comes to you with worries about a friend, there are some things you can do to support. Um, keep an open ear and listen to your child's concerns. Encourage your child to seek help. Um, if you have concern about your child's friend's safety, definitely contacting the friend's parents to share your child's concerns or what they're seeing on social media or what they're hearing from their friend that's causing concern. Um, you could contact a school um, administrator or a school counselor with your concerns so that the school counselor or administrator can follow up with the student of concern at school. Um, Obviously, if you're ever concerned about someone's immediate safety, if you're concerned that um, a friend or your child might take action to harm themselves immediately or in the very near future, um, calling 911 is an appropriate thing to do. And then, you know, when your child has come to you with, the, with this kind of information, really reassuring them that they did the right thing, that you're going to help them and support, and that you're going to work together with them to help um, the student of concern. Um, if your child is coming to you with this information, you've really done something right as a parent because they see you as someone that they, they trust. They see you as someone that they know will help. Um, and so if you're receiving this information from your child, um, you're doing something really right as a parent. And please remember help is always avail available. Um, great ways to access support for your own child um, or to encourage someone to seek support would be to see your medical doctor or pediatrician, to reach out to the, their school counselor, and obviously if you're ever concerned about someone's immediate safety, please call 911. The Suicide Prevention Lifeline and Text Line are also here for your resource. These um, are great resources to reach out if you ever have concern or just questions. Um, as someone who's supporting someone, you can reach out to these lifelines and get support. It can be scary as a parent or community member to receive this kind of information from your child. Um, but we really want to encourage you that you don't have to be an expert. You don't have to be a mental health trained person in order to support someone, um, your child or a friend who might be suicidal. Give yourself permission to be human. Um, it's common to feel uncomfortable with this topic. It's not a comfortable thing to talk about. Um, I do this work in schools and talk to students who have indicated possible thoughts of self-harm on, on an almost daily basis, and, um, and I've done hundreds of these types of conversations with students in our district. And as a mental health trained person and somebody who has lots of experience in this area, it still makes my heart pound, right? It is, it's still an uncomfortable conversation to have um, because it's, it's really critical point for a person. Um, but it's important work to do, and it's important work to do. Um, after you have this kind of conversation with a child, it's really okay to debrief with a friend, to debrief with um, someone that you trust, because holding someone else's um, grief and sadness um, on your own heart can be a heavy weight, and so it absolutely is okay to reach out to other folks and just share how you're feeling, um, in order to kind of support you when something like this um, comes up in your in your world. And then most importantly, you know, when you learn that there's a concern for someone's safety, when you're seeing warning signs, it's really important to not keep things a secret, right? As a parent, sometimes um, you might be worried or not know how another child's parents would react or what the consequences would be for a child to um, be identified as a student of concern who might be thinking about suicide. But just like we teach our students, the consequences are greater um, 
potentially with not acting, right? It's very important that you um, reach out for support, access support um, for, for a child in need if you have a concern. Other ways that we can support our students and our kids right now, um, especially as community members and as school team members, are building protective factors. Protective factors are things that are present in a child's life that reduce the likelihood of them experiencing serious mental health challenges, reduce the likelihood of them thinking about suicide. And we all have a key, a key role in ensuring that kids um, have protective factors on board in their lives. Protective factors include encouraging kids to connect to school, participating in activities, strong connections to friends. So really encouraging our kids to get involved in things, joining things in the school environment, joining things outside of the school environment, um, staying engaged in activities that connect them to other people, other kids their age, um, really helping our kids find things that are within their areas of interest that bring them some joy and connection to others. And please just let your child know you're always ready to listen, right? Whether they're concerned about a friend or whether they're struggling themselves, you are a key important person in their lives to ensure that they, they feel supported, that they don't need to worry alone, that they have some, a trusted adult in their world um, to go to if they have concerns. Like we talked about earlier too, building coping skills is another sort of protective factor um, or a factor in helping someone feel better or deal with big intense emotions that are coming their way. We as community members and parents absolutely can help our kids build their coping skills. We often sort of, you know, we, we as adults don't always remember how we, le how we learned the coping skills that we have. We don't always have the most adaptive, helpful, um, healthy coping skills either. We all can use um, work and reminders and practice in building what our coping skills are so that when big emotions come our way, we have sort of some tools in our toolbox to go to to cope with those emotions. And we don't feel hopeless. We don't feel that we need to resort to more extreme or intense behaviors to sort of cope with the emotional pain that we're seeking. Some really important coping skills to encourage in our kids are things like getting some exercise. Um, journaling is a, an effective, um, for some people, way of kind of coping with emotions, getting it all out there on paper, making it tangible, and then um, can really help us to cope and, and think through things. Talking to friends and family, listening to music is one that many of our teens see as an important coping skill. Um, and, you know, I'd want to encourage you for a minute here to think about, like, where does your teen go to? Where does your kid go to when they're feeling distressed? What's their go-to strategy? What's their typical response? And are there places where you could help them build some additional coping skills that maybe they're not thinking of right now? Oftentimes we hear from kids like snuggling a pet, taking a pet for a walk, right? Caring for someone other than yourself can be a really important um, coping skill. Um, Many of our students engage in kind of doing deep breathing exercises. Um, a coping skill can be as silly as like watching a YouTube video of cute puppies just to sort of boost that mood enough to um, cope with a really difficult moment. So I want to encourage you to think about like what are some things that we do in our home to model coping skills for our kids? What are some areas that we could work on as a family um, to kind of show our kids how to cope through unpleasant feelings. Another thing you can do as a parent or community member to support our teens is creating an open space to talk about mental health issues, um, really reducing that stigma and normalizing mental health challenges and the spectrum of mental health in your home can really help your kids feel comfortable coming to you when they have a concern. Oftentimes we sort of, as parents, we think that we've talked to our kids about these things. We think that they know where we stand. And oftentimes I hear from teens that they have kind of no idea what their parents think about mental health, um, have no idea if their parents have ever had struggles with mental health or have ever used coping skills to get through difficult times. It's often a topic that 
is not explicitly spoken about in our homes. And we really encourage you to think about opening the door to this type of conversation because often our teens really don't know what your family thinks and don't know if they don't know if they can talk to you about these kinds of things. And we want to encourage them to, right? Seeking help through your family is one way, one really important way for kids to access support for themselves or a friend. Um, and mental health is really, you know, part of physical health. These two things are definitely linked, right? So ensuring that our kids know that mental health is just imp as important to us as physical health can really um, open that door. Ways that you can do this as a family are just asking open-ended questions, right? And so asking questions that let the child steer where the conversation goes. Um, not rushing to solve problems, and I know as a parent, this one's hard even for me, um, to really just listen, right? And to ask our kids to tell us what they need, to ask our kids to tell us what they're concerned about, to ask our kids to share, um, and really holding that, you know, holding back that impulse to sort of say, well, you should just, or just do this, or, you know, resisting that impulse to sort of solve our kids' problems for themselves and instead kind of leaning back and listening and getting all the information from them. Um, and then just being available, right? Being a, a community member, a parent who your child knows they can come to, um, saying things to them that, that open that door. I'm here to talk. Um, I'm here to support you. We can talk about mental health in our house. We can talk about what's going on for you, our friends, and I'm here to support you. Asking about suicide can be a really difficult thing to do as a parent, as a teacher, as a community member. But I want you to know it's absolutely okay to ask about suicide. Um, asking about suicide will not put that idea into someone's head, will not introduce an idea that wasn't already there. The research is in support of that um, strongly, that it's important to ask explicitly. When you are hearing warning signs, when someone is sharing things with you, that make you feel concerned, it's absolutely okay and encouraged to ask about suicide. Asking about suicide really does let someone know, I see you, I see that you are struggling, I see that you are in pain, I care, and I wanna know if this is going on for you. There are some indirect questions you could ask if you have a concern about suicide. Do you wish you could go to sleep and not wake up? Do you wish you were dead? Um, or more direct questions, also absolutely okay and encouraged, in fact. Have you thought about killing yourself? Have you had thoughts about suicide? These are absolutely okay things to say, um, and we really do, again, encourage you. If your red flags are going up in your head that um, someone might be thinking about suicide, ask. It conveys the message that you care and that you're noticing that someone is in significant pain. It does not introduce the idea that, that someone should be or might be thinking about that. And if you're watching this now going, there is no way my kid is gonna talk to me about this kind of stuff, um, this page is for you. So here are some tips for getting teens to talk to you. Um, you could set kind of a teen-led family meeting and let your teen set the agenda, let them sort of lead what we're going to talk about. Um, sometimes playing a game can be a good way to sort of create space for an uncomfortable topic. Um, if the subject comes up in a movie or TV show, you're hearing about something that happens in social media or um, in the news that brings up these topics, those are a good place to just kind of bring up the topic with your child. Um, these are two of my favorites, like going out for a walk while you're walking through the grocery store or taking a drive. Sometimes that kind of um, we're engrossed in a different topic, right? We're doing something that moves our bodies or we're doing something that's where there are other things to look at other than directly into each other's eyes <laughs> um, can be a great way to open the door, right? You're driving your kid to soccer practice or home from soccer practice um, and just opening the door. Hey, let's talk. How are you? Um, and then really continuing the conversation, right? Oftentimes our kids don't want to sit down and have one big intense conversation at the dinner table um, about, about these types of topics, but just kind of bringing it up here and there, having little short conversations about things, not making it a big deal can be a way to sort of open the door. Um, and then also enlisting other trusted adults. Um, 
a grandparent, an auntie, an uncle, uh, um, a tutor, right? Encouraging them to also open that door for your child as somebody that they could talk to. So to review, here are the action steps you can take as a family. Watching for warning signs um, that you might see. So big changes in behavior, indications that someone might be depressed, drug and alcohol use, um, hopelessness, talking about suicide. Um, if you're noticing those warning signs, to lean in and seek help immediately. Um, helping building coping set skills for your child and positive supports for your child. So getting involved in community activities, talking to friends, you know, avoiding those that withdrawing by, by getting out there in the world. Um, modeling coping skills, talking about how you cope with difficult emotions um, in your home. And then three, talking to your child about suicide and being ready to listen, right? If you've kept the door open in your home and your child comes to you, um, just being ready to listen and then acknowledge, care, and tell once you hear something that's concerning to you. You are not alone in this um, effort to reduce suicide in our community. This is really a community effort um, with our schools and our community members to make a difference to reduce suicide risk in our community. Um, this chart sort of shows the rate of car accident deaths versus suicide deaths in the United States over 15 years of time. Um, and as you can see, over that 15 years, the car accident risk reduced significantly. And what was done during that time include better seatbelt laws, slower speed limits, um, using your phone and driving and texting and driving um, laws, um, you know, public service announcements about safe driving, um, increased, you know, DUI patrols, all of those things, right? Because, you know, the public health system identified that accidents were the leading killer of teens. And when doing prevention efforts across the entire community by sort of targeting every sector of why car accidents occur, caused this, you know, the, the death rate by car accidents to reduce significantly. That same effort is being conducted right now to reduce the suicide risk for our students. Um, and you here are contributing to that by being, by watching this video today. For more information about the signs of suicide lesson, how you can be um, a supportive adult in a child's life. Um, and so, you know, if you would like to access the actual material that your children are receiving in class, please take a look at this Signs of Suicide Parent page. It's sossignsofsuicide.org slash parent. Um, this also provides you with um, a self mental health screening that you can take on behalf of your child um, that can kind of tell you, am I seeing warning signs? Um, Anna, am I seeing things that I should take action um, for, you know, for on behalf of my child? So that anonymous screening can be a way for you to, to think about what you're seeing in your home and if you are noticing warning signs. To summarize the ACT acronym for parents, the key is acknowledge, so noticing those warning signs, noticing those big changes in behavior, um, including, you know, feeling hopeless, talking about suicide, sleep, um, big sleep changes, anger and frustration, um, just noticing those warning signs and not downplaying them, not thinking, oh, this is just typical teenage behavior, but instead leaning into those and saying, huh, I'm concerned, right? Showing your child that you care, leaning in, opening the door for them to talk about mental health in your home, um, saying, tell me more, Right? leaning into these types of conversations when you hear things from your child um, that are concerning to you, and then telling a professional, reaching out to your school providers, reaching out to your child's medical care provider, reaching out to, if your child has concern about a friend, reaching out to that friend's parents, um, but making sure that we're not holding a secret or holding our concern um, ourselves for a child. When your gut is telling you that there is a concern, reaching out to, to a trusted adult in our community, a professional who can support you. And this concludes our video for today. Thank you so much for sticking it out with me. Um, again, this topic can be challenging for folks. So 
please, you know, go take some deep breaths yourself after this. Do something that kind of lifts your mood um, after this. Um, but please, you know, take home that key message of acknowledge, care, and tell. Together we can ensure that every student has a trusted adult to go to by being that trusted adult. Um, I very much appreciate your participation today. Um, you're part of our community and you're someone who can help your child save a life um, or save a life yourself. If you have additional questions or want to engage in some small group discussion, we will be offering those opportunities. Um, the Spanish small group session will be occurring Tuesday, October 12th, 2021 from 4 to 5.30 p.m. The Mandarin session will be occurring at that exact same time. And the general and English session will be held on Wednesday, October 13th from 4.30 to 6 p.m. Please take a look at the Bellevue School District website for more information about those offerings. And again, thank you for your participation today. We're here as a school system to support you. Please reach out to your school's administrators and school counselors if you have concerns about the safety of a child in our community. Um, thanks for being here today.